Hey, today I'm going to be reading a snippet from the book that I'm reading called The Science of Being and the Art of Living. Experiencing and the Art of Being The experiencer experiences the object when the object connects itself through the senses and is reflected upon by the mind. The object coming in contact with the senses of experience leaves an impression of the object on the mind, and the essential nature of the mind, of the experiencer, is overshadowed. This shows that the process of experience is a process which throws being out of sight. This is called identification. It is as if the subject within becomes identified with the objects outside and loses its essential nature, its being. Thus we find an experience brings the experiencer out of his own being. The art of being on the level of experience means that the experience of an object should not be able to overthrow the status of being from the mind. That is, the mind should be able to maintain being while experiencing the object. In the part on mind and being, we have dealt in great detail with how, by the practice of transcendental meditation, the mind begins to maintain the pure state of being alone with the experience of an object. So, this is a lot to unpack, but it's very interesting. Number one, what Maharishi is saying is that by using the practice of meditation, transcendental meditation, which I practice every day in the morning, I meditate for 20 minutes, and in the afternoon I meditate for 20 minutes. This practice allows us to see things for what they really are. Now, what I mean by that, and what I think he means by that, is that in this life, we wander around the streets, we drive in our cars, we are in our houses, we watch TV. All the time, the impressions that the object gives us our judgments about these objects, our thoughts about these objects, they often cloud our mind from seeing the truth about what these things are. So, for example, if you turn the TV on, the TV is going to shout whatever content is on the TV. If you turn it on mute, it's still going to be shouting with light at you. You're going to be experiencing this object. But if you were to unplug the cord of the television, you would see the television for what it really is, which is a combination of metal and plastic and glass and some rubber buttons, whatever. Really experiencing this object for what it is makes you understand its actual nature. And its actual nature is that you give it value when you pay attention to it. It's not doing anything to you. The, the television, the radio, the trees, the cars, they are objects. They're, they're only objects. What you make up about these objects creates the value in your mind. And the only way that something has value in your mind is if you pay attention to it. And meditation allows you to experience things without judgment. You see, but you don't internalize. You, you see a tree. A tree is there. There's a tree outside my window. You can picture it in your mind. There's a green tree outside my window. I'm not going to show you. Just picture it. Okay? If you were to think to yourself, this is a tree. I am observing a tree. And let it be that that. If you were to think to yourself, that tree is too tall. It's blocking my sun. Now I can't get the, the light in my kitchen that I would like. Now you've placed judgment on the tree. But did you ever consider that you're paying attention to the tree makes it cause you stress by giving it the value that it's doing harm to you. Does that make sense? It's very deep. But basically, what it boils down to is there is an issue, and 
If you use your imagination, you can think about what this is. There is an issue that exists where almost everyone that you talk to today in 2020 has it in their mind that someone else is the problem in their life, whether it's the president, whether it's their neighbor, whether it's their ex, someone else is the problem in their life. And what this is talking about is that that's a lie. The truth is that you make it to be the problem for you by paying it attention. You give it value by acknowledging is it its existence. The same way that you're watching this video right now, you give it value, which I thank you for. And I'm giving myself and I'm giving uh, you and the phone and I'm giving all of these things value. And that's fine. As long as I don't start to make it the problem for me. The, the issue for us as humans is when we don't spend time in meditation, when we don't spend time in yoga, we don't allow ourselves the state of being, of just observing without judgment, just observing, just experiencing an object and just saying, it is what it is. We start to say, oh, but you know, if, if this thing wasn't so like this, how are you gonna change something's nature? That thing is that. Now what? The only choice you have is to not pay attention to it. And yeah, it might force its way into your life, at which point you get to make the choice whether you want to continue to allow it to bother you or whether you're going to understand that that's its nature. And the only thing you can do is find the peace in yourself to know that it does not make or break you. Only you do that. You have the power. That's the point of this. Objects do not have power over you. You have the power. And it starts by experiencing your being. It starts by understanding the very nature of being alive is to be. You're free to be. And how beautiful that is. Even gravity doesn't have power over you. It holds you to earth, okay? It shapes your bones, but its power is not more than what you allow it to have. Stay with me. Gravity affects what we touch. It affects our body. But it doesn't affect your thoughts, your mind, your sense of being. The eternal nature of love is not affected by gravity. The quality with which you treat people is not affected by gravity. It doesn't have power over you. You have the power. You are not confined to your body. You are one with everything. And that is the freedom which is brought by meditating and being and experiencing things for what they are, not for what you make them to be. See you next time.